I will show to you how to make chlorine dioxide as a solution and I'm also going to show you the pure gas and the liquefied gas. We are going to do a few experiments with it and I'm also going to dive into why you should never take this as a cure for anything because it certainly is not a cure but it's more likely going to kill you. To make this magic yellow gas you first need to add some sodium chloride with a T to a bottle. Sodium chloride with a D won't work because it is plain table salt. To get chlorine dioxide, we then added some hydrochloric acid. When holding a piece of paper behind the bottle, you can see the pungent yellow color even better. When exposed to the sunlight, chlorine dioxide might decide to violently decompose to form oxygen and chlorine. In our case, the reaction didn't want to start, so I added even more hydrochloric acid and decided to initiate it a different way. To light up the chlorine dioxide gas safely, I used this elongated lighter. The reaction was pretty violent and the chlorine dioxide decomposed to form chlorine and oxygen. I decided to add even more hydrochloric acid and to try it again. This time the reaction wasn't violent and this might have been because the chlorine dioxide concentration in the bottle was lower. I haven't added that much hydrochloric acid yet so there is a lot of leftover sodium chloride in the bottle. Because I wanted to do a few experiments with chlorine dioxide solution, I added a lot of distilled water and even more hydrochloric acid. We are now left with a concentrated, beautiful yellow solution of chlorine dioxide. Chlorine dioxide can be used to bleach stuff and therefore I'm going to show it to you. A small piece of black cloth was lowered down into the chlorine dioxide solution and I left it in there for about an hour. Because chlorine dioxide is a gas, the solution can't be that concentrated. Sodium hypochlorate is therefore still a better bleaching agent. As you can see, the chlorine dioxide did a great job at bleaching the cloth, but I decided to put it back in for another 3 hours. After these 3 hours, it looked like this. Even more interesting than chlorine dioxide solution is liquefied chlorine dioxide gas. Therefore I set up this contraption made out of plastic, because if it shattered there won't be glass shards everywhere, and it failed. The first time it popped off the balloon and apparently the container was also damaged because the second time it decided to smoke and then it started to do something else. As it turns out plastic might not have been the best option. Therefore I set up a glass apparatus for our next try and we even worked with a somewhat dilute solution of sodium chloride. If you wonder why I use this tiny round bottom flask, it is because chlorine dioxide tends to violently decompose and if this happens, it would be a disaster if I used a huge round bottom flask. As more chlorine dioxide was produced and I added more acid, you were able to see that the color in the flask changed to almost black. This might be because a very concentrated chlorine dioxide solution has this color, but it might also be some weird ionic compound forming. We also saw a massive amount of chlorine dioxide just escaping without condensing. I guess that using a mixture of ice and salt is just not cold enough and I need dry ice. I got some dry ice, set up another crappy apparatus and produced even more chlorine dioxide. It looked like the amount of sodium chloride added in the first place was not satisfactory. So I opened up the apparatus, threw in some more, closed it back up and let the apparatus do its thing. In the end, we were left with this yellow solid. If this was elemental chlorine and not chlorine dioxide, it would be a liquid. As we haven't tried this before, I have absolutely no idea how dangerous this pure chlorine dioxide actually is. I set up this remote firing system for the first test. That was quite boring. Let's take a look at the slow motion shot. I also tried to ignite the chlorine dioxide using a blue laser, but apparently the blue laser is not strong enough. With the help of a match, we ignited it and it looked like a normal reaction between oxidizer and match. To get at least one interesting reaction, I thought to myself, let's add some MTBE. It would surely ignite upon contact, but unfortunately it just dissolved the chlorine dioxide. 
That was more violence than I expected. I actually planned to do the same with liquid butane, but after seeing what happened with the MTBE, I decided to just burn it. You likely wanted to see the decomposition of chlorine dioxide initiated by light, so I tried again using a very strong light source. I used this light pistol containing a light bulb, which is filled with a very thin magnesium wire and pure oxygen, which I got from an old photographic cube. It unfortunately didn't want to ignite chlorine dioxide. Even the UV flashlights failed to get the job done. So I reverted back to old school and threw in a match. Okay guys, to end today's video. When chlorine dioxide can be used as a disinfectant when in solution, why can it not be used as a cure for you? If you drank it, it is not going to selectively destroy viruses and bacteria which might be harmful for you. It is going to oxidize everything in its path. It's going to oxidize, it's going to release free radicals and it's going to be overall harmful for you. If you believe in some conspiracies that chlorine dioxide is a forbidden cure, please go on, rewatch the entire video and notice that chlorine dioxide is a dangerous chemical. If you drank it, it is not going to be better for you than drinking bleach and it is going to do more harm than good. If you liked today's video, consider subscribing and giving me one of these because it helps me with the YouTube algorithm and with making even better videos. I wish all of you a great day, until next time.